Thank you for joining. In this lesson, I will explain how to read SQL queries effectively. Reading a SQL query effectively involves understanding its structure and logic. There are various techniques available to read a query, either from the start or the middle. It can be read from right to left or from left to right, involving various parts, skipping or engaging to comprehend a query quickly and effectively. During this course, I will be providing conditional techniques on how to read a query based on the query logic. The diagram on your screen shows the structure of the query, and the most common standard way to read it would be from the very left part moving to the right. So, select the name and location columns, next move to the planets table, where the status column equals salt, and finally order it by planet ID. This approach can be used when you are experienced and it won't take much time for you to understand such a simple query. But there are various approaches to read any queries more efficiently. Now the order of query reading has changed. Let's say we can start from the middle, and then we can choose the correct direction. Either we go to the left first or to the right first. With this updated approach, the sequence is changed. And as you can see, the number 1 now starts with the from keyword, followed by the select, then where, and finally we sort it using the order by command. So this approach would be first, more convenient, and second, logically acceptable, since it represents an approach we used in regular life. And our brain can comprehend this order easily, because this chaining is done in accordance with logic. Now let's open SSMS. I have prepared these examples to explain the available approaches to reading queries. First, as an option, we can start by identifying the main action of the query, whether it's a SELECT, INSERT, UPDATE or DELETE statement. This will give you a sense of what the query is trying to achieve. The second example suggests looking for the tables involved in the query. This includes identifying which tables are being queried, joined or modified. This approach provides us with an understanding of the table structure. Although I haven't mentioned joins yet, I would advise you to consider them if you encounter commands like join. If it's a select statement, focus on the join classes to understand how different tables are related and the order of joins. Next, examine the where clause, if present, to see how data is filtered. This is essential for understanding which rows are being retrieved or modified. Also, pay attention to any aggregate functions, like sum, count, average and other functions are used in the query. Now, this can provide insights into data processing. Be aware of aliases for tables and subqueries. They can make the query more readable and help you understand its structure. If the query involves sorting or grouping data, understand how it's done. Sorting can be in ascending or descending order. The ascending order is the default order, so it will be done implicitly. And if we need the descending order, then it needs to be stated explicitly. In projections, like this one, in a SELECT statement, consider the list of columns selected. This will tell you of what data is being retrieved. Once you have grasped the central part of the query, review the beginning and end to check for any initialization or finalization steps. In some cases, variables or temporary tables might be set up at the start and cleaned up at the end. Finally, to fully understand the query, it can be helpful to run it and observe the results. This is especially useful if you are debugging or optimizing a query. As I mentioned earlier, starting from the middle can be a good strategy, because it often contains the core logic of the query. However, don't forget to check the surrounding context to ensure you haven't missed any essential information or conditions. When starting from the middle of a SQL query, whether it's better to go left or right depends on the structure and complexity of the query. Here are some considerations. The first approach is a left to right or backward. Start from the middle and work backward to the beginning of the query. This approach can be helpful when you want to understand the source of data or initial conditions before proceeding to the main action. It's suitable for queries where the logic and filtering conditions are set up at the beginning and the final result or projection is at the end. The second approach is right to left or forward. In this case, begin in the middle and proceed forward toward the end of the query. Use this approach when you want to understand how data is being processed or what the final result looks like. It's helpful for queries where you are interested in the outcome of the final data manipulation. The choice between going left to right depends on your specific goal and what you are trying to understand. 
For complex queries, it may be necessary to switch between these approaches as needed. Also, consider using indentation and formatting in the query to help visually follow the flow of the SQL code, along with employing comments to document sections of the query. Throughout the course, I will share additional insights on reading queries and how to quickly obtain results without spending unnecessary time deciphering the query. These tactics will also assist you in writing queries efficiently. You just need to decide whether you go from left to right or from right to left, and the query will appear without any additional exertion. And these lesson takeaways. First, properly format and indent your SQL queries. This helps in visually identifying different sections of the query, such as select, from, where, join, and group by. Consistent indentation makes it easier to follow the query's logic. Second, for complex queries, break them into smaller, manageable blocks by using temporary tables or common table expressions. This can make it easier to understand and maintain the query. Third, pay attention to key clauses like select, from, where, and join. These clauses define what data is being retrieved, from where, and how it's filtered. Understanding these clauses can often provide a high-level understanding of the query. Fourth, look for join clauses to identify relationships between tables. Understanding the joins helps in knowing how different tables are connected. Check whether the joins are inner, left, right, or full outer joins, and these joins kinds I will explain with future lessons. Fifth, if the query contains subqueries or common table expressions, understand their purpose. This can be used for complex filtering, calculations, or data retrieval. Consider subqueries as separate queries within the main query. Six, if there are aggregate functions, like sum, average, count, identify what they are calculating. This often provides insight into the purpose of the query. And note if there are group by clauses associated with the aggregate functions. Seventh, look for order by clauses to see how the data will be sorted. Identify limit or offset clauses to understand how many records will be returned. Eight, carefully read the aware conditions. These conditions filter the data and can significantly affect the result. Pay attention to the logical operations and or and parentheses, which determine the order of evaluation. Also about comments and documentation. If possible, add comments within the query to document the purpose of specific sections or complex logic. And the final use tools and IDE features. Many integrated development environments for SQL like SQL Server Management Studio or database-specific tools provide features for visualizing query execution plans. This can help you understand how the database processes the query. And remember that reading and understanding SQL queries is a skill that improves with practice. So practice as much as you can and try to decipher a query quickly and correctly. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!